In this video, we're going over the SBA's 2024 capital impact report, breaking down the numbers of how many loans they get out, uh, the total amount of dollars that they lent out, who it went to, what businesses it went to, the amount of disaster loans that they give out. So we're going to go over all of that in this video. I'll try to make it in just a few minutes, just run through all this because it's a lot of information. And I don't want to get you all bored, but the big headline is they haven't done the amount of loans that they did this year. In the fiscal year, it was from October 1st to the end of September. So we just got this report a couple of days ago. I'm, I'm recording this on October 25th. But they have not done this amount of loans since before the Great Recession of 2008. So it's been 16 years since they've done over 100,000 different loans. So that's great uh, for the SBA. It's great for the economy because our small businesses need the capital. And uh, small businesses employ about half of the workforce across the country. So it's good that We've gotten back to a point where we uh, are really starting to support these small businesses again. Okay. And I'm just going to run through some of these bullet points that they have on here. Uh, but the SBA 7A program made up over half of that amount of 56 billion. They did 31.1 million. So I'm sorry, 31.1 billion dollars for the SBA 7A program. That's where you can uh, borrow up to $5 million of your small business for working capital. Okay. And then for the SBA 504 loan, that is for the commercial finance program, they did 6,000 loans for 6.7 billion. I think in 2025, we'll see an uptick because the rates, if they keep going down, we'll see a lot more refinancing uh, because owners can get that cash out and also pay a lower monthly payment. Uh, they did 5,800 micro loans. Micro loans are SBA 7A loans of $50,000 or less for $94 million. A big part of that was the SBA, uh, they, they broke a moratorium of 40 years uh, for non-banking SBA lenders. So they allowed, I think they had a hundred plus different lenders sign up to, uh, to, to be able to give SBA loans. And a lot of those were micro lenders or community lenders, um, as well as nonprofit lenders that they focus on those smaller loans. So that's why we saw a big uptick in those micro loans. And that's good because a lot of these small businesses, if they're asking for $50,000 or less, they weren't able to get that money from traditional banks because why would a traditional bank waste their time when they can do one $1 million loan versus $20,000, $50,000 loans that take a lot of time and effort and you make the same amount of money, whereas you can just do one bigger loan, you know? So it's been good. It's, it, it's opened up a lot of, um, it's created a lot of competition with the SBA market and it's good. It's been good for the SBA. I'm sorry, for those small businesses. Moving on, they, they did 11,100 surety bonds. So this allows for those smaller general contractors to be able to compete with the big boys uh, to get to uh, obviously to bid on those federal contracts or even non-federal, but it just allows those smaller construction companies to be able to play uh, play ball with the big boys. Um, 9,500 disaster loans to small businesses for $730 million. If you look back, uh, obviously Maui counts towards uh, 2024. Um, so obviously a lot of Hawaii businesses were receiving funds for this as well as, uh, you know, on a typical year, plenty of hurricanes, tornadoes, uh, natural disasters that happen, unfortunately. And that's where the SBA steps in and helps out those small businesses with loans to get them back on their feet. And I read a, there was a statistic recently that I read that, uh, it was like one out of four small businesses. I think it was just one out of four businesses. It doesn't matter if it's small, medium size or big will, um, they will run out of business uh, after a disaster. So it's very important uh, that the SBA, you know, they play a big role in helping these businesses get back on their feet after a disaster. Okay. And then um, th they did 1,100 loans and equity investments totaling over $7 billion with their SBIC funds as well. So I'm going to show you all some charts because that'll be a little bit more visually um, it'll be easier for you all to go through this video and see what we're talking about here. But over the last five years, you can tell in 2020, it dipped a lot because of COVID. There wasn't as, you know, a lot of businesses were not operating or they ran, went out of business, period. Uh, so there was a lot less financing going on. The borrowing needs were not as high in 2020. But as you can see, we've bounced back since then. I like to look at 2019 because that was before COVID, right? Um, so business was normal then. That we can see that we've done, the SBA has upticked. I mean, they've done a lot more in financing since 2019. In 2019, we did under 80,000 units. And now, like we talked about at the beginning, in 2024, we've done over 103,000. And here it breaks it down. If you see, um, if we're looking at 2024 here on the far right, 
Uh, that that uh, bar chart here, the bottom is the SBA 7A loans. And, um, you know, we did close to looks like 75,000 units there. And then in green, we see the SBA 504 loans. Those are, again, are the commercial real estate loans. Then the micro loans, the surety bonds, SBIC financing and disaster. Uh, so 2024, you can see here, there was a lot of disaster loans uh, given out. So again, um, just a lot of heartbreak across the country dealing with um, natural disasters all over. I mean, you can see it's, I think it's about triple than what we've seen in the last five years. And 2025 will probably not be any different because of uh, the two hurricanes that happened. I mean, that's fiscal year 2025 because it, it happened after October 1st with Hurricane Hilton and Hurricane Helene. So I think 25 is not gonna be any different. There's gonna be a lot of money needed to help businesses get back on the ground. Um, let's go on to the next chart. SBA 7A small dollar lending, which is considered $150,000 or less. It, it has returned to form since, it's been since 2016 that we saw the numbers this year that we've seen in the past. Took a huge dip all the way down to COVID in 2021. And now we've returned back to doing the numbers that we did eight years ago, which is good to see. Let's go on to the next chart. Um, where they point out that SBA lending has seen a big uptick for black owned businesses, uh, more than double than what we saw five years ago. In 2019, it was about 2,500. Now it's over 5,000. So that is great to see for our black owned businesses that they are able to uh, take advantage of this SBA financing as well as Latino owned. It's almost double as what it was in 2019. It was about uh, 5,000 units then, and now it's close to 10,000, okay? So that is good to see as well for the Latino owners. And if you look through this whole report, you'd see that it's the same for all the other races, but black and Latino owners really stood out from all the other races. And then women entrepreneurs have seen a huge uptick. Uh, so you can see here in the number of loans approved, it was 10,000 for women owned businesses back in 2019. Now they're all the way up to 15,000, which is great to see. And then there's, a, there's an outlier here that I want to point out in 2021, they did close to 10,000 units, but the uh, the dollar amount was actually higher than what we did this past year, 2024, when we did 5,000 more units. So another thing to point out is they said with micro loans, which again is $50,000 and less, women-owned businesses took up 46% of those micro loans. Uh, so they almost did half, which is crazy to me. I think that's a really interesting statistic, but these women-owned businesses are really taking advantage of these SBA micro loans. All right. Moving on, uh, we're looking at, the, they did a survey, the Fed did a survey with banks, QE banks, credit, union, credit unions, um, and they asked if they did, you know, what, what were the numbers on you giving out new, S, I'm sorry, not SBA loans, but new loans to small businesses. Um, and this is all across the country. In blue here, we see this is new small business lending for the, the banks that did respond. And then the um, in yellow is the new SBA loans. And this is quarter over quarter for the past five quarters. The, uh, the banks, the credit unions, they responded that they only had one quarter in the past five quarters where they actually saw a uh, percentage increase, whereas the SBA actually had four out of five quarters where they saw an increase um, there. So that was interesting to see as well, that the SBA is a lot more active in funding small businesses the, the banks and the credit unions and community banks across the country. Uh, but here we can see where most of the disaster loan, uh, as far as quantity of loans went in 2024. So Florida, there was a lot in Florida, Maryland and Hawaii. Um, and then we see Texas, Illinois, Michigan had a decent amount. California had a lot. New York had a lot. And I think that is that Rhode Island um, there in the corner. So those were, uh, those were, were the, um, you know, disasters happened and, and where most of the money went for those disaster loans. I'm not going to go over surety bonds. Here's an appendix. If you all want to go through this report, it actually breaks it down by state. How many loans, you know, if you, if you look at Alaska, there was 131 SBA 7A and 504 loans in 2024 for a hundred million dollars. Um, I wish they did, they did this on an increase or a decrease from 2020. I think it would be a, a better barometer if we looked at, you know, 2019, because 2020, we can just kind of throw out the window. It, it was really uh, a weird year as far as financing goes and among other things. 
Uh, but typically California is number one in SBA lending. They did $5.5 billion. Uh, and they did how many, that's almost 10,000 units. Uh, let's see, Florida is always uh, another big state, 3.5 billion. And so it goes. So you all can look through this yourself. I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep looking at all these different numbers. It's going to take forever if we do that. So if you, again, if you want to check it out, just look up 2020, um, 2024 capital report by SBA. But here's an interesting one to look at, uh, the uh, SBA capital impact. So 70 loans, they did uh, close to 52,000 in 2019. And now in 2024, we've done uh, about 19,000, 18, 19,000 more in terms of units in 70,242 in 2024. And then uh, here, here we, we can look at this again, but you can just see how 2024, as far as disaster loans, there was, I mean, we did three times almost three times as many as we did in 2019, but 2020, 2021, 2022 were only you know, less than 3,000 each of those. So this past year has been, there's been a lot of natural disasters going on affecting businesses. Again, 2025 is not to be any different, it seems like, uh, with the two big hurricanes in October, earlier this month. Um, small dollar lending, we already went over this with the with the bar chart. Again, it, it's just interesting to look at. So literally, the same exact number. We haven't seen that since 2016. With 2016, we did 38,043 units. In 2024, we did 38,043 units for uh, loans under 150,000. But this year versus 2016, they did, uh, what's that? Um, is that 200? It's not 2. Seven. Yeah, it's $2.7 billion versus $2.25 billion in 2016. And again, we already went over this with black owned businesses, but it, you know, again, it's, it's twice the amount of what we did in 2019 and twice the amount in, in terms of dollar amount. Latino owned is almost twice the amount since 2019. And then women owned businesses, it's about 50% more, which is great. And here it breaks down the quarter over quarter. If you're looking at federal reserve versus SBA loans. And then here it breaks down the disaster loans by state. Again, Texas, Hawaii, Michigan, California, Florida, Illinois, Maryland all had, um, you know, all had more than a thousand SBA loans that they gave out. There's a lot of drought too this year, so that really affected you know, small businesses across the country. And then surety bonds. I'll just go over this real quick. Nine point two billion. The the SBA, um, you know, helped uh, small contractors be able to give out bids to. Um, to be able to win jobs versus 2019, they did 6.6 billion. So those were the big points. That's everything that I wanted to hit, o hit on uh, as far as this capital impact report. But just to sum it all up, you know, SBA 70 lending is way up. Uh, Micro loan lending is way up. They they added 100 different lenders, and a lot of those are being able to, they are approving those micro loans, which is great for these small businesses that. You can access these SBA loans versus going to an online lender that might charge a 20, 30, 40% interest rate. That's great. Then obviously the, the women-owned businesses, black-owned businesses, Latino-owned businesses, we've seen a huge increase in the last five years. Um, and, but, uh, but again, I think a lot of you small business owners that are watching this, um, you know, for you all to be able to access those $150,000 SBA loans and less is going to be, to make, they made it more streamlined. They made it easier to get approved. Um, I think that is a, it's going to be a huge boost for you small business owners to be able to access that capital. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's it. Everything's, you know, as far as the numbers, everything's looking good. Hopefully 2025, those rates keep coming down with the fed prime rate. You know, I think, uh, obviously that'll open up the economy. More businesses will be able to access capital and those payments will, will, uh, continue to go down. So all in all, everything's looking good.